What's going on, smart people? This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Within the DNA of the budding physicist is the need to be better than everyone else. I mean, you based your career path on what profession got you the most shocked facial expression as a response. Oh, you're doing physics? You must be really smart. Thanks. Actually, I haven't started yet, but that sounds pretty correct. The moment you pulled, I want to research theoretical quantum relativity out of the air when someone asked you what you wanted to do with your life was the moment you let the world know that you're a winner and a little full of shit. But every winner needs a coach, which is why Coach Belichick here to give you some useful tips on how to be a successful physics major. It's day one of undergrad. You're walking down the hallway and are surrounded by posers, students who are only taking introductory physics because they needed a science credit and they were too late to register for oceanography. It's up to you to let them know that even though you're learning the same laws of physics, yours are harder, which brings us to our first topic. Your intro physics class is calculus based. You know what that means? Absolutely nothing, but they don't know that. I can count on one finger how much calculus you'll use in calc based physics, but be sure to insist on not referring to it any other way. I mean, don't get me wrong, calculus becomes an absolutely indispensable tool of the trade, but one half base times height and rise over run will probably get you where you need to be at this level. Now what about the students who are in your calc-based physics class? Has anyone already informed them that you're someone important? Now that's a good question, and actually, your professor will probably survey all N students in the room to see what everyone's major is, and N minus one of them will be in some form of engineering. And you know who the remaining person is, don't you, Top Dog? That's right, the loner genius strikes again. Now, intro physics can be pretty challenging at first, which is why favoritism for being the only physics major in the class will allow you to pick up the slack of you having no idea whether G should be positive or negative. And if someone answers a question out loud, say they say the answer is five, you can loudly interject, <laughs> five what? Apples? Pancakes? See, only you could be that comical while simultaneously demonstrating the importance of units. So you've begun to establish dominance in your department, that's great, but your classes don't end there. You'll also have to take courses in the math department. Now, if they're still taking classes with you, the math majors haven't yet learned to let epsilon be greater than zero to prove that you're no threat to anyone. At this point to them, you know what they know and more, and that more is application. So apply what you learned by studying the engineering students in your class and just be confident and loud. That'll take you surprisingly far in life. But if and when you hear the math majors talking about induction, run away. This foe is beyond any of you now. What, are you going to make a mistake? Moving on. Time management can be a really tricky topic. On one hand, starting assignments when you get them will allow you to finish them on time, but on the other hand, you're not going to do that. So the real question is, what can you do to finish your work on time given that you're starting it the day before it's due? Well, surprisingly, that may not be enough time to get your problem set done, but it's exactly enough time to come up with an excuse for why you need more time. For every deadline you have, you'll need one excuse why it would just be impossible to complete this week, but next week will be better. Like you couldn't finish your mastering physics this week because you lost track of time reading the textbook and going over the supplemental resources that your professor gave you, and if it's all the same to you, do you mind if I just turn it in a little bit later? In reality, though, you just spent the week testing how low your ping got since you started using NordVPN while online gaming. That's right, this whole bit was a segue for today's sponsor, NordVPN. It's in the name, NordVPN is a virtual private network that on top of additional security allows you to access things like region locked content around the world. But if you are someone who just likes to click on HTTP links in their email because it's just one letter away from HTTPS, then you should check out NordVPN's CyberSec feature because you are a danger to yourself. Step one of business, insult your audience. <laughs> Now, if things like security and lag aren't huge selling points for you, then you might like knowing that on top of any other countries, you can access things like Japan's Netflix from within the United States, which does have different available titles. And actually, that shit makes Flammable Math's anime obsession almost look healthy. Now, you can get started with a two-year membership plus four additional months at a huge discount by clicking the link in the description, HTTPS, by the way, 
or going to nordvpn.com slash Andrew Dotson. So thanks a lot, NordVPN, for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. Now your homeworks at the beginning will likely come from something called mastering physics, which gives you the opportunity to answer problems in a style and format unrecognizable from how your professor asks questions. Now there may be a lot of questions to answer, but you'll get multiple attempts at them, and the icing on the cake is that it subtracts from your score with each subsequent attempt, bringing you to a heightened state of anxiety to maximize your performance. That's actually why they call it performance anxiety. And when your professor sees that you somehow managed to answer all 50 questions in six minutes, boy will they be impressed. Eventually, you'll graduate to taking upper-level physics courses where your homeworks are now written or at least tastefully plagiarized by your professor themselves. And your class size has decreased from 100 to 10 students, a much more intimate setting. Now your professor can put a face to the submissions, which means you're going to want to make sure you submit quality homework solutions. But you've got nothing to be afraid of, because now you know G is always negative, except for when it isn't. X gets cosine, Y gets sine, except for when they don't. So physics has no more tricks up its sleeve, right? That's exactly what that shit means. Now your homework is basically just showing that some equation is true. So what you do is you very clearly write out what's given, immediately followed by completely illegible intermediate steps, and then you put a big box around the relation that you were told to prove. And now your professor has two options. Screw it, you're probably right. Or two, ask you to clarify how you got your solution. But at this point, you've already spoken to your peers about what the real solution is, so you're good to go. Now, I don't like talking about this next thing, but it's, it's important. Um, what do you do when you have to solve a problem where they don't give you the final result? We like to think, uh, my, my professor would never do that, but it does happen. And when it happens, how do you solve a problem that hasn't already been solved for you? Your homework has the initial speed of the ball moving at 10 meters per second, but all the solutions online have it moving at 8 meters per second. This is not what you signed up for, but you're a physics major. You can do this. So what you do is you meet up with your friend to compare answers, but unfortunately you left yours at home, so you were hoping maybe you could just see theirs and let them know if you got the same thing, Drake and Josh style. Now you might be tempted to write out your thought process throughout the problem, what assumptions you're making, where you're getting various equations from. Bad idea. You do not want to show your hand because you brought Pokemon cards to a poker tournament. You want to be as opaque with what you actually know as possible because what you know wouldn't exactly have Mensa knocking on your door. But you know what? They've knocked on other people's doors, so why not you? Huge thanks again to NordVPN for sponsoring this video, and thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section if you did, and I'll see you all there.